Hello, Miss Naomi. How are Hello. you? Hello. Oh, I'm good. How are you? How's I'm... this angle? Oh, thank you. Yes, I went all out. I got a nice little glittery backdrop for you. I <laughs> went all out. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should be sitting a little up. You, you do what you need to do. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Um, <laughs> and you're looking gorgeous. I have to say definitively. I mean, it, it is fashion. Um, oh, thank you. What do we do with fashion? Can you remind me? Um, I think we strut, we yeah. pose, we right. make a single and we sell it on iTunes. There we go. We got to get that <laughs> coin. Now there has to be a catch. There's either sweatpants on the bottom half or there's a red kimono hiding in there somewhere. How dare you? <laughs> yes, give me that. That's one of these. <laughs> no, I was um, wondering before doing this interview, um, in the same vein of your Little Women makeover subject, should I just, like with that wonderful meme of you two just staring at each other, should I just stare at you from across the room? Is that the most meaningful way to make a connection with you? Honestly, social distancing before social distancing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> Iconic foresight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but thank you so much for having me, Joey. Thank you so much for having me, Entertainment Weekly. I'm super excited to chat today. Of course. I love you so much. I love everything that you do. So I'm very honored that you uh, are here today. Thank you very much for being here. Now, um, I want to start off with a little game um, because you are such a superstar pose queen and everyone could use more fabulousness in their life now that we're all on Zoom and doing digital meetings these days. So I figured our viewers could benefit from some digital posing tips. Um, okay. So I'm gonna give you three video call scenarios and you give me the perfect pose for each. Is that okay? Perfect. Okay. So the first scenario is Derek Barry and Nebraska Thunderfuck FaceTime you to invite you over for drinks. There's so pose much. one. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, pose one, we got it down. We're gonna get in trouble today. Um, now, the second scenario is a business meeting on Zoom with Bob the Drag Queen about potentially being the face of his new line of purses. Ooh, it's, it's gonna be face. I feel like there should be like a little tiny purse hanging from my eyelash or something. So you have to use your imagination, but. Oh, this is gorgeous. I hope somebody is screen capping this, yes. And, and gift the purse like balance, you know? <laughs> yes. I'll make that after. <laughs> now, the last one. A casual sisterhood Zoom chat with Kim Chi, who is testing makeup swatches for her next collection. They're smeared all over her face, and she's asking you which one works. Ooh. 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 I think I actually have it. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can plug it. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's lovely. Gorgeous. Sold. <laughs> I'm buying 30. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're sold out, so good luck. <laughs> <laughs> now, important matters to discuss today. Uh, before we get to your one-woman show, you have a big TV gig tomorrow night, um, the RuPaul's Drag Race Vegas Review docuseries uh, premiering on VH1. So can you give our viewers a quick tease of what to expect and what this show is all about? Oh, I'm, like, a little terrified just because it was, it was like, before the pandemic so like I think everyone has just kind of like mentally evolved since then yeah. since January um but I'm really excited there's a lot of drama I had so much fun working with like people who I haven't worked with in a long time or have never really had that much like personal time with mm -hmm. it's gonna be cool seeing like the drag queens on not a competition yeah. like not comp competing with each other. I think that's going to be really nice. And I don't think the fans have really been able to see much of that. And you definitely, even though there's not a competition, there's going to be just as much drama. Yeah, yeah. Now the previews, they have been really wild. In episode one, it's it's a really fun watch. I, I As a longtime fan of this franchise, it is something really different. And I really think it's a great show. Um, I enjoyed seeing you guys prepare for this show, but also getting to see footage of Derek Barry's full on thruple from inside his home. Like that is incredible. And you may or may not have some dramatic encounters that involve Nebraska and Derek. Like you almost getting kicked out of the thruple house. Like what, what is up with that? Oh my God, have you seen the episode? Yes. Mm -hmm. <sighs> see, this is, the, this is the gag that you've seen it and I haven't. Seen it. <laughs> 
Well, it's pre I mean, press, press usually, I mean, in order to cover things, you have to see things first, so. And, um, and in order to have the queens on the show, they have to, you know, show up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm like, I'm very, very excited to see how that all played out because whenever, when I was going over to Derek's, I already was kind of feeling a little uneasy because we did have our issues on season eight. And I'm sure everyone who's seen Drag Race season eight can like remember that moment. But I'm like now at a point where I'm trying to like, as an established 26 year old, I'm now at a point where I'm trying to... <laughs> Definitely not. Um... <laughs> I'm not at a point where I'm trying to like move past that and like we have to work on the stage like five nights a week so it'd be yeah. super awkward if we didn't get along mm -hmm. um but that doesn't mean I can't fight with her girlfriend mm -hmm. yeah I mean it's it's part of I mean the the culture uh, anybody's culture I mean it, like drag culture and beyond is like you have you have clashes with people that you're working with that that often and what I like about this is that Drag Race as a competition, it does give us this heightened version of reality in the context of a really spectacle-based competition. Um, but this is more like, you know, it's backstage showing the kiki and the clashes and the family dynamic that goes on at a real working show. Um, so did it feel like grittier or more quote unquote natural to you to be filming in that kind of scenario versus like being in this workroom uh, competing against these girls? Um, definitely felt a lot more natural because I didn't have to worry about like, am I going to go home tomorrow? Am I going to have to lip sync tomorrow? I really like was not in competition with any of the other girls because I obviously had the best wig. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, as always. <laughs> um, but it was just really nice not having to like, go onto the runway and stand there for like eight hours and have yeah. to be like ripped apart. And I don't, you know, it's just like, I can do me. You all can appreciate it and watch it mm -hmm. on VH1 Friday, yep. 8, mm -hmm. 7 Central. Right. And Cameron and Vanjie are just making out all over the place. Like, what is up? What is going on there? What is the doing? <laughs> I know. I was, like, so gagged when I saw that in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's got to be like, one pillowy smooch. I will say that, like, drag queens, I totally understand like being attracted to another drag queen because they just like get it and they're like in tune with their sexuality in tune with their gender in a different way that yeah. maybe your like cis gay male at the bar is not um, in tune with and I mean drag queens are fucking hot we have to be like so confident to do what we do so I'm just like so impressed with confidence and such a turn on so more power to the Kai Kai for yes. sure. Yes. And now the last question I have about this, um, I think it's interesting in the trailer, we did see also um, that it looks like this is filmed while the coronavirus shutdown stuff is happening. Like there are confessionals in the, in the trailer where the Queens are actually talking about this. So you guys were filming while this, um, the shutdown and stuff was happening. Like how did that impact you in the moment? Um, it definitely was scary. It, like, I mean, for everyone, it just like came out of the blue. I mean, mm -hmm. it really didn't now that we're like finding out about it. It really wasn't coming out of the blue. It was just like fed to us so late. Um, but we, I don't think a lot of people realize that when you're doing these stage shows or these productions and you're just like so enthralled by whatever you're seeing on stage and all you see is like the dancers and the queens, but there's a huge team of people backstage who are zipping us up and doing our corsets and yeah. like really making the show happen. So can't really see I, I was really scared about that like I was like pumping sanitizer into everybody's hands before giving me a zip or trying to like be like all like double jointed and zip myself you know yeah <laughs> um but I really hope that we can get back there because I will say that was like the my favorite show that I've ever been a part of it was so glam I didn't have to like sleep on a bus or go <laughs> onto a plane or anything like that it was it was a nice like reset for sure yeah 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 hopefully everybody gets a chance to go back there when everything is, is said and done and, and we can all see you on stage there again but until then uh vegas review vh1 fridays at eight uh it's a it's a great show so um your fans are definitely going to be excited to see you on there 
Now, outside of reality TV, um, your one woman Smalls World show, uh, tickets for which are available now at NaomiSmallsDuh.com. Um, it's an important step in forging a path for yourself as a performer outside your identity on reality TV. Um, you said that this is also a tribute to your family too, um, I think which is a really interesting take for a drag show, especially a digital drag show. Um, so why did you decide to go that route with the story that you wanted to tell? Well, I think that, um... I mean, I know that my family is just like such a huge part of my story. And I think during this time, it's what I've realized why, I mean, the world is really falling apart and like scars are being like shown to the world. And yeah. I would like say that it really makes me like sad and disappointed, but it really makes me very grateful to having the family that I do have. I come from a very multicultural blended family mm -hmm. and my parents were just like so progressive and really let us grow up in an environment where we were like getting to know each other as people and not based on the color of anybody's skin. And yeah. that has helped me so much in every aspect of my life. Cause not only like based on the color of people's skin, but just so many different personalities and yeah. treating it everybody with like, I mean, I don't say I don't know if I treat everybody with love <laughs> at all times, <laughs> but I I try to treat everybody how I'd want to be treated at first, for sure. Yeah, and um, I'm just like so grateful for my family, and I just wanted to like highlight them, and I think they're such a huge part of why I am the way that I am. Mm -hmm. And since it is like my own um, show, it's a lot easier to be emotional and like vulnerable because it's not going to be like cut up in any way or put you know mm -hmm. it's just a lot and I got to work with all my friends which is a lot yeah. more comfortable you have a lot of control over this and I like that I think you also said that your mom makes an appearance in this as well so what can you tease about the part she that... does she's actually like right here too oh, <laughs> oh my god look at that That's so cute. I've, I've got my mom and my dad oh I love that I love that um yeah my mom makes an appearance I can definitely say that I would not be Naomi Smalls without her in a lot of ways. I mean, she was buying my wigs and everything before, <laughs> before I could do that myself. Um, but she's just such a strong woman. And I used to think that I was so much like her. Like I was like, I love, I, I love her. She's so strong. I'm just like her. But what I'm realizing is I'm just like such a huge fan of her. And I hope that I can like make her proud for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And this is, I, I know that this is also important to you because, you know, it is your first one woman digital drag show. Um, were you feeling like, do you think you were feeling maybe a frustration or out of control of your own image in a certain way that made you want to do something that was so like fiercely reclaiming your own image as an artist with this? Yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily frustrated with like how I've been portrayed or how I've been shown on television or how like the audience gets to know me because when you think about it like we are just we're one person sharing the spotlight with 12 other people when we're on our seasons or um when you sign up to be part of somebody else's production it's like their name is also on the flyer so right. they can also have a say in what's going on stage um but with this show i just i'm such a control freak and i have like an exact vision of what i want everything to look like and i have an amazing team that can make it happen so it was really refreshing to not have to like go through that back and forth and have to explain myself to anybody. And I think it's just something that you get to see the queen or the entertainer in a like a more genuine scope. Yeah. And that's, I, I imagine as a fan, that's exactly what I would want to see. Mm -hmm. I would want to see like a hundred percent the star right. um, rather than like a diluted filtered mm -hmm. version. And what we've seen so far of what you've teased, it looks great. And I know that there are songs in here from Lady Gaga, Kanye, Beyonce. So can you tease the performances and what they mean and how they sort of fit thematically into the show or the narrative that you're, that you're creating? Yeah, I guess like the first, the show, <laughs> the show is um, a kind of like a love letter to like what makes me me. And that has to do with a lot with um, confidence and a lot with my family. Uh, it took me a really long time to realize that like I'm the strongest person that I know. And if I want something, I can make it happen. And I need to stop like comparing myself to others. 
that doesn't mean that I don't do that. But at least yeah. now recognize that. And um, I think it's really important for drag queens, especially to cater to both sides of their personas. And I think that gets lost when we're in the hustle and bustle. But at the end of the day, like you're the one who has to like lay on the pillow and go to sleep with yourself. So you better like yourself. And I'm lucky enough that Naomi has like given me so much confidence and so much like respect for what I can do for others. Um, so it's like kind of my, the very first performance of before I let go situation is um, more like a, a love letter to self-confidence. But the rest of the show is like full on family, corny, son, I'm obsessed with my mom. And <laughs> um, there's like a number in there where it kind of, it's like a full circle moment where my mom used to watch me like practicing outside of the house to like, I was just like dancing around in high school in my heels and headphones on. And I had no idea that she was watching me the entire time, but I think it's going to be like super cute for her to see like the fully realized glam moment. I love that. That's so cute. And I know music, it does play, music is like a big formative part of, of everybody's life too. So I like that you're incorporating stuff like um, music that you were listening to when you were younger, um, like the Gaga stuff. Uh, and I was about to lose it on you the other day when you were like, oh, Lady Gaga, that's high school memories. And I was like, bro, <laughs> that was college for me. I'm an old lady. <laughs> well, you still appear very, very twink. So I like, I, I was just confused. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is Juju B said the same thing about me last week. Now you're saying it. I'm gonna start to believe it. Oh my gosh, thank you. Whatever you're doing is working. <laughs> oh, thank you. Now there might be, I heard there might be an homage to an iconic Gaga moment in this show too. Yes, I'm gonna to give the gays to. everything they want. I think that everyone's mm -hmm. been demanding a Dance in the Dark video. Yes. Mm -hmm. For the past 11 years, so. <laughs> Well, speaking of gays, um, I think Monet Exchange is in the comments saying that being gay isn't okay. So, um, <laughs> so we just have to, I think we should just stop. Um, no, um, now I see you also in this, posing in your underwear in front of some cardboard boxes in one of these photos. Um, and because you say there's intent behind all of the fashion in here, panties and cardboard box, what is the intent? You got to explain to Miss Naomi. The visual pleasure. Did you like it? I did. Yes. Well, then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so like, but there is like a fashion narrative here too, though, because I know that fashion is very important to you. So um, there's an intent with every outfit that's paired with, you know, a background or a set. So what what's the story you're, you're trying to tell through fashion here too? Oh, I think that fashion has just been like an amazing tool for me, like my entire career, my entire life. I feel like I can really always express myself. But the number one thing I love about fashion is that you can like transport somebody into a completely different world. And that's something that I have always really appreciated with drag. And I think my favorite quote ever is actually a Violet Chachki quote, mm. Vidal. Um, <laughs> she like tweeted one day, it was like, it's not called being a look queen, it's just called looking good. And I like love that. Yeah. And she, I, think, I actually think she ended the tweet with, um, and y'all should try it more. <laughs> <laughs> Iconic advice, biblical advice. Uh, but yeah, it, like fashion is just like, I'm such a visual person. I'm the Virgo boots and I try and make <laughs> like the whole world come together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Now, confirm or deny, uh, no backbends in this show. You you must have gone to like nine chiropractors since All Stars Four. Honestly, being on the Vegas review show with Evie <laughs> and seeing her like <laughs> full on flexibility <laughs> has I wouldn't say scared me from doing a backbend, but like if it's not going to be as fierce as that, then I don't know if like I don't know. She can like go into like some double <laughs> know, springs and everything. Nuts. Yeah. You do have a nice little moment with Evie in the first episode too. You guys are, uh, you guys are getting your nail or your feet done, your your nail, your toes done, in a salon. It's a nice little cute little moment. So I'm, nice I'm, I'm sure we needed it for sure. <laughs> I could definitely use one too right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, but what about 
Uh, I know that you're you're also very, very close with Kim Chi, um, and I know that how important she is to your life. I know that this is about family, but is there maybe like any Kim Chi ties to this too? Could we maybe see her making a surprise appearance? Uh, you'll definitely see some KCCB promo. I honestly like every project I've ever done, I've always wanted to like include Kim, and I think it's been like the vice versa. Yeah. Because it's not something we ever really have to think about. It's always just like something natural. And I think that's how all collaborations should be. Um, I'm so proud of everything that she's done. And I continue to hope to work with her for sure forever. Yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's just natural, you know? Yeah. yeah, you guys are very cute together. I love your little, your little sisterhood. I always love seeing it. Yeah. Well, Naomi, this has been such a pleasure. Um, I feel like my legs have grown a full 12 inches longer without stilettos on uh, since I've been talking <laughs> to you so through osmosis. Um, but we're unfortunately, I think, at the end of our time together. So do you want to give one last plug to um, the Smalls World Show before we go? Yes. Uh, please get your tickets online to Naomi. Uh, let's do this all over again. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. We'll the, small, <laughs> the Smalls World <laughs> Show coming to your screen. September 1st. Get your tickets online at naomismalls.com and keep a lookout for a Zoom meet and greet. All benefits will be going to the Inland Empire Harm Reduction. Wonderful. 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 Oh, wait. Oh, Derek Barry's in the comments now. Wait, Derek, <laughs> Derek says, besides Kim, who is your season eight fave? I mean, okay. I would say that Derek. Kim, Bob, and Derek are like my gals from yes. season eight. And I, I, like, if, I've had some really crazy nights with Thorgy as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, season, season eight girls all the way, season eight. And I'm so excited for you guys to see it tomorrow. Or you've already seen it. <laughs> I can pretend like I, I saw it for the first time tomorrow. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> um, no, uh, thank you everyone for joining in for another episode of Cleaning Out. Thank you to Naomi Smalls for being here. Um, a reminder to tune into the Smalls World Show uh, Tuesday, September 1st. Um, as Naomi said, tickets are available at naomismalls.com. Um, and also please listen to Naomi and Bob in the newest episode of EW's Binge Podcast that just went live on Apple Podcasts and Spotify today. And make sure you tune in to Entertainment Weekly's Instagram Live next Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern when I will be interviewing Miss Vanji. So goodbye, everyone. And please don't forget what we do with fashion. Is it fashion? Yeah, I, is it's it fashion? fashion? It's fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye. <laughs>